fighting is not a scary word or something that should bring to mind anything like scary. It is something that allows us to describe the feeling that we have as we zoom down in a roller coaster, as the wind blows past our hair, or any other memorable moments, events like your holidays, and do a whole lot of things. And myself, I sometimes call descriptive writing painting with words. Okay, are you able to see the presentation that I've put up? Okay, uh, Licking Heights, are you able to see the presentation? Um, I am not hearing anything from... Okay, Licking Heights, are you able to see the presentation painting with words? Okay, then we can continue. So in this presentation, we are going to learn how to write descriptively and also why we write descriptively. Um, you might wonder, again, why do we write de descriptively? Well, in our stories, we do not want to confuse our readers. But when we leave questions hanging in the air, we often do. Let's have a look at the sentence. The creature entered the area. What do you think of this sentence? Does it leave some questions? Do, uh, do any of you want to ask some questions about the sentence? Maybe what kind of creature? Yes, what kind of creature? Also, how did the creature enter? Because there are many ways we can enter. We can push through a door and break it down, which is a slightly violent way of entering. We can walk calmly in. We can somersault or cartwheel through an open door or, again, slightly violently, a closed one. And uh, we can run, we can dash. We can crawl, we can trudge. There's so many ways of entering an area. And speaking of which, so many different kinds of areas, playrooms, forests, restaurants, office buildings, that we are really at a loss to decide which of these is the one that we're talking about. But when we write descriptively, we're able to solve this. We write about what things feel like, taste like, smell like, look like and sound like, conveniently eliminating all or at least most of our reader's questions. And eliminating means getting rid of. But does the sense about the creature talk about what things feel like, look like, smell like, etc.? So does, does the creature entered the area sentence talk about what things feel like, look like, smell like, and all that? No, it does not. So it's our job to improve it. Let's look at some ways to improve this sentence. We can improve it by specifying words. Is this creature a human, an animal, a monster? Let's say that this creature is a monster. This is a specific noun. But what does he look like? We can add adjectives like sparkling and adverbs like slowly. How about he's a hot pink monster? We can use specific nouns like barbed wire and specific verbs like somersaulting. We can even tell ages through words like toddler, infant, teenager, etc. So how old is our monster? How about 52? With names, we can get even more precise about this monster. If a person or monster is someone you know, you'll know who he or she is as soon as you hear their name. Okay, let's have a look at the sentence now, or paragraph. 32-year-old kelp, okay, so we change it from 52 to 32, actually. A hot pink monster backflipped into the basement with a loud bang snot pouring down from his nose. It smelled of rotten eggs. Poor Kelp was rather miserable because he had landed on his head. Okay, so 
In descriptive writing, we're able to do whatever we want, even if it's ridiculous, like a hot pink monster back flipping into basements. Um, with descriptive writing, we are able to see um, uh, many things like monsters, even if they don't really exist. So how many of you have had a 32-year-old hot pink monster backflip into your basement? Yeah, I don't think any of you have, and neither have I, but we're still able to write descriptively about it, and that gives us a good time, because we can wonder and imagine about what a monster would be like. Okay, I'm going to put it back on presentation view. So you're able to see a presentation again, right? Okay, so have any of you visited amusement parks before? Raise your hand if you have. Okay, I see that a lot of you have, and they're pretty fun. So you know what an amusement park is like, but you can make yours better. So let's imagine you're the owner of a huge amusement park. Contribute suggestions to tell us what your amusement park is like. So we're having a look at this sentence, my amusement park is nice, and trying to improve it with the help of your wonderful imaginations. We can ask some questions like, why is it great? What kinds of rides and activities does it have? How big is it? This is an amusement park where you decide everything. Together, we will write a paragraph about your imaginary amusement park that will make everybody want to come, probably including me. Okay, so let's head over to a Word document and what we'll be doing is you will contribute suggestions about your amusement park, the one that you have designed. So start thinking about what your amusement park is like and then we'll be able to incorporate to use a little bit of everybody's. Okay, so we will start with uh, Licking Heights Elementary. Can some of you... Oh, okay. Licking Heights High School. Sorry, I am... Uh, my mind's a little addled at the moment. Okay, so Licking Heights High School uh, could one of your students, or more than one, raise their hand to indicate that they would like to give some suggestions and then the teacher choose a student to give this, uh, to give their suggestions? Okay, so again, we are thinking about an amusement park. You each will think of an amusement park and with this amusement park, we'll be able to take some of your ideas and put it into our paragraph about one huge amusement park. Okay. Um, we're not currently able, <coughs> excuse me, um, we're not currently able to hear Licking Heights High School that well. Could you please say it again? King's Island. King's Island. So this is what the amusement park is called. So King's Island Amusement Park was a... Okay. What's a word to describe big, but better than big? Uh, Stark Elementary. 